Welcome back to your okay fans to another exhibition match. This time we're gonna have a match between once again God and Sakdoth, this time on Frozen Planet. Let's begin. So Sakdoth is starting out sorry, God is starting out in the southeast corner of the map, Sakdoth starting in the northwest corner of the map. And Frozen Planet has popped up a little bit before, but just as a bit of review, it helps spiders! It's got a lot of hills, very hilly map, very difficult for bots to get around, or relatively difficult for bots to get around. They can get around it, but they get around it slowly. While Sakdoth going for cloaky bots, he's decided just to go for bots, not really care about anything. While God going for spiders. And I like to see that, because I like spiders. I think they're a cool factory. And on this map, they do pretty well. So, I imagine God will be able to take a lot with that. No, spiders, main tactic with them is you set up your fleas, you scout out with the fleas, you make sure that you know exactly what your opponent's up to, and then you use venoms and recluses and hermits to actually deal the damage. Though admittedly... Fleas in large numbers can deal quite a bit of damage, but that's not often done. They die too quickly for it to be effective. And it looks like Sakdoth is aware of the flea there. He is setting up his glaive to try to deal with it. They will be able to deal with it no problem once they get to it, leaving one of the glaives to deal with it and the rest of them going off to fight or to scout out God's base, figure out where he is. And like I said, fleas can actually deal a fair amount of damage if unimpeded. This Glaive will not be able to kill the Metal Extractor in time, I think. Or no, maybe it will, actually. Holy crap, God's doing a great job micromanaging this fleet, and just barely 3% health left. Almost like one or two shots away from killing that Metal Extractor. Sakdos saves it. And God is unable to do any effective harassment at this point, but that's not what the fleas are for. They're for scouting. They're for figuring out what your opponent is up to. Before you start harassing with Venoms and Recluses and, well, mostly Venoms. Recluses aren't really for harassment. They're for later in the game. They're for artillery stuff, but... <clears throat> Excuse me. But fleas are for scouting and a little bit for harassment. But still, that was very effective. That very nearly got rid of that metal extractor. Cleverly done by God. And this Venom doing a great job getting rid of the glaive here. Another couple of glaives will come by, but... Glaives have a difficult time dealing with Venoms. Now, a single Venom is not so bad, but against a large number of Venoms, it is kind of tricky. They have a tendency to clump up and then get hit by a splash of the EMP. So it can be difficult for them to get rid of them, but Sakdoth able to micromanage around that. Still, this Venom wisely getting to the top of this mountain, making it very hard for the Glaives to deal with it, while at the same time, God is building more Venoms, getting more forces into position to start attacking Sakdoth's base. And this Venom just distracting all of these Glaives, most of them trying to get rid of... No, they're all trying to get rid of the Venom. They have not given up on trying to get rid of the Venom, but four of them are stunned and just getting torn to pieces. And another Venom at the bottom, also able to get rid of them, so these Glaives are going down. More Glaives coming in, however, Sakdoth not content with just having those Glaives out. He is continuing to build forces, as you would in this game, since that's kind of what you should do. In order to kill things, you need stuff to kill things with. And this game is all about killing things. If you don't kill things, they won't die. Just how it goes. Everything here is functionally immortal until killed. Sakdoth's well aware of that, and thus he is building more units. However, these units are not able to actually deal any damage. These Venoms, except for that one missing on the top of the cliff there, aren't actually getting hit too hard. The Venoms are basically not taking any damage. The Glaives trying to get in a position to deal with them, but it's rather difficult to do so. This one Glaive actually getting lucky, another Venom coming up the mountain to try to deal with it, and that will deal with it no problem. So these Glaives doing the best they can, but Venoms are hard to deal with with Glaives. It's, I think the best option is Warriors, but I, it's hard to say because Warriors, like anything if it gets locked down by EMP is difficult to deal with. Glaives just happen to have a low enough HP that the EMP can actually hit them pretty much in one shot. Because Venoms have, as you can see, about 650 or so damage per shot in EMP. So a Warrior can take one shot and not be stunned. And Warriors are being built. So yeah, Warriors can take a shot, t they take two shots to be stunned, so it's a little bit more time, and of course it distracts it from the Venoms, sorry, it distracts the Venoms from the Glaives. And God making sure never to rest on this, he is moving with the flea, keeping Sakdoth busy. Not harassing with his other fleas, though the main base is protected by a laser turret, so it's going to be rather difficult to do. But making sure that any naked metal extractors are being punished for that, or at least are being pressured just a little bit. Now, at the same time, we see that God is moving in. He's getting his Venoms pushed forward. More Venoms coming in. Actually, that's just a Weaver. That's just more Builders. 
getting his economy set up actually at this point, so he's not quite pushing in super hard, but he does have enough Venoms that he doesn't need to build a whole lot more at this point. And his commander coming in as well, being a main part of the attack force, supported by the Venom, so that will be effective. Does have a shotgun, so that's going to get rid of the Glaives, no problem. The Warrior is going to be a bit of an issue with the Rock. Okay, Rocco's... I like to see how this will work out. I think Rocco's will work okay, but on this map, it's hard to say just because of the hills. I mean, the Venoms can easily just hide behind hills and peek out and fire, and the Roccos can't shoot through hills. They don't have homing missiles. The homing missiles don't go above the hills or anything. So they don't have the easiest time hitting these guys. We'll see how it works out, though. On flat ground, they do have an advantage, but the Venoms are able to just speed past them, the rockets entirely. And able to get through the glaive. Enough glaives here. I think that should be able to finish off. Nope, never mind. Uh, what am I saying? I should know better at this point. The glaives will not be able to finish off the Venoms. And God's commander shot the shotgun commander able to deal quite a bit of damage to these guys. The glaives are doing not very much at all, unfortunately. Now, where was that warrior that was sent up? I know there was a warrior that was built. I'm curious where it went off to. I feel like I missed something because. That warrior looked like it was going to be useful. Unless... Well, God's commander's down, so at the very least, God has lost that. But at this point, the Venoms are still being a massive thorn in Zakdoth's side. I guess the... I guess the warrior was just traded out for a Rocco. It was never actually built, apparently. I feel like I missed something. So, I'm going to check chat. Nope. Okay, so at this point... Venoms versus some Roccos. More and more Roccos. Now, at this point, I think there's enough Roccos that it's not going to matter the fact that Venoms will move around. They are going to get hit a fair amount. And it's going to be a f quite a lot of damage. Now, it looks like Sactoth is relying largely on radar. He does have some visual confirmation of this Venom, but in a great part, he is clearly relying on radar and also relying on leading. This Venom, God is just micromanaging that Venom around, making sure it doesn't get too much damage dealt to it. While spamming a bunch more and making sure to get them repaired. Got a Weaver on the front lines to repair his Venom as best he can. So the Roccos aren't doing a huge amount of damage. At the same time, a Flea up here getting rid of these Rectors, doing what it can to get rid of these Rectors. They aren't defended, so it's just a matter of time. But the Rectors are building up some defense forces. Or, well, defensive turrets here. However, this Rector is going to go down. This Rector should be fine. This Defender should be up in time. But that flea is going to try. It's going to try nonetheless. And is it going to get it? It will not get it. No, it will. That Rector not building when it could be. And that Defender just going down with the next Rector coming in will finish it off. And that is still two Rectors for the price of a flea. And that flea is actually out of... The Defender can't even hit it. The flea is just across the mountain, but the Defender now getting it. Still, that flea did a great job getting rid of two Rectors for a flea. That is insane. It's 20 metal to get rid of about 300 metal worth of units. Very cost effective there by God. However, at the same time, Sactoth has been taking advantage of this opportunity to expand, and he has got a massive economic advantage. At this point, he is doing a, God's doing a nice harassment job on Sactoth's base, but the thing is, Sactoth has so much in play at this point that he can... He has twice the economy of God at this point. That's a big thing. God actually doesn't have a whole lot of resources. He has some metal extractors being built to the north, but the ones he started with weren't that strong. I mean, they're okay now because of overdrive, but they're not... Wait, no. Sorry, I'm thinking of a different map, apparently. Okay, never mind. Actually, the ones I hear are okay. Sorry, I must have been thinking of Geyser Plains. Yeah, that's it. Never mind. Frozen Planet has fine metal extractors. They're all pretty much two for each, but still, God doesn't have as many. That's the big thing. God doesn't have as many. He doesn't have much reclaim. Since most of the fights took place in Sactoth's territory, Sactoth is able to get all that reclaim back. That's a pretty big thing. So Sactoth, however, does have to deal with these gear defenders. He does have to deal with the recluse weavers. Why do I not have outlines? Oh, very annoying. Oh, apparently I do. It's weird. Okay, for some bizarre reason, my outlines went away. Okay, we're good. Sorry about that. Getting weird graphics issues. But that's not important. What's important is the Hermits coming in here, trying to get through Sactoth's forces. Now, Sactoth, on the other hand, he has a large enough army, actually quite a few sides, too. These sides should be able to get rid of the Venoms before the Venoms actually deal any damage. Though the Hermits might be a bit of a problem there. Sactoth's commander taking a lot of EMP damage. One more shot, it will be frozen, and there it is, frozen. Locked down completely. The Hermits should be able to take it out at this point. 
once another Venom comes in just to refreeze it, but at the same time, Glaives are coming up, Glaives and Scythes are coming up to try to take care of the Venoms as best as possible. And the Scythes not hit before they start dealing damage. Unfortunately for it, one, no, both the Scythes have been EMP, they've been locked down, but the Glaives were able to take advantage of that opening, getting rid of the Venoms, and the other Scythe coming in, finishing off the Venoms. God's forces at this point are completely destroyed. And God has thrown in the towel. He is surrendering by self-destruction. There it goes. That is game. Sackdoth wins. Nicely done. So I have another one for you shortly. I think it's going to be another Sackdoth versus God game, actually. Let's just double check. Yes, it is another Sackdoth God game. So I'll be back with that in just a couple minutes. Stay tuned. <laughs> 